So let's get it going. Willie P, kick us off. Afternoon, Christian. How are you? Good afternoon, Will. Uh, still recovering, really, if I have to be honest. Not uh, not the best, but uh, ready for the next challenge. Understand. Um, I know that Enzo didn't feature on Wednesday. Neither did Camille. Are you targeting maybe midweek next week for those guys to return? Um, we will see. Camille, we will see Camille, hopefully. Um, and so I'm not sure. We will see how the week progress. I think we have uh, the important thing for me is that we have to do the best thing for the club, which is for the players, which means uh, to get them back, for them to stay, not to get them back and then lose them again shortly after with the same injury. I mean, if anything else happened, you know, this is life. But uh, the most important thing is then when they come back, they come back to stay. So I do, I'd rather wait few more days and to make sure that they come at uh, ready to to help the team and uh, to perform without any um, reasonable risk. Then after, you know, a little bit of risk, there is always an element of that, but that we want them to come back and stay. Speaking of a guy who's coming back, um, Guzman, I know, played about an hour on Wednesday. I know you were asked yeah. about it. Um, I know probably weren't ready to give a full evaluation of what you saw, but uh, what are the next steps you think for him? Do you think he needs to play 90 in a game before you see him up at this level, or what do you want to see more from him? No, he's traveling with us. He's with us in the squad. So he's not... Uh, we had the discussion, and he's a little bit like uh, Kalina. I think uh, the game was important to test him, to see how he responded to play an hour. Obviously, it's not at his best because I understand how, you know, that works and everybody has got in his eyes Guzman when he was on top of his form. And so having him back, you think that he's going to be the same as uh, he was, but uh, it took time to build his uh, form at that point. And so we have to give him time, like uh, Kalina did with Crown Legacy one game. The level is is different. So... I mean, we can play in him for two or three games, but then the MLS is completely different level, completely different challenge, physically, mentally, tactically. So we need to... The Crown Legacy game was very important. I spoke with Jose yesterday at length about our boys. And uh, it's important we are on the same page. And then uh, he's not ready 100%. Because it takes time, but he's uh, he's fine, physically fine, and I want him to be with the team as soon as possible. Really, and he wants that as well. I know you talked about uh, when you brought David up uh, for the one game to get him that experience. With this unfortunate thing that you've had with your frontline players, do you think anybody like a, a Yuri Tavares or somebody like that uh, from the front line of 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 legacy would be? someone you'd look at maybe to, to get a little trial run in here while you're down some numbers in the front line? 100%. We were looking at plays. I mean, we are traveling with us, Patrick Gimang, which came on. So is uh, Brandon is with us. So ready to. And uh, I don't lose sight of Vinny Melo. I, it's important. We also had a discussion yesterday with Jose about him. So it's not... Uh, but it's important that he keeps doing... He keeps working hard because... You know, uh, to be a player at that level with uh, with the talent that he has, you need to maximize that through understanding the importance of doing the other things well, working, uh, running for the team. You know, being uh, really uh, bringing energy uh, on the ball and off the ball. So, of course, I keep an eye. I know Tavares is doing well; he's scoring goals, and uh, I think another player that will be with us is uh, Nick Scardina that is a young lad that is doing well, a great attitude, and he has done really well every time that he was called by Crown Legacy. So I think we are uh, we are introducing those guys to the first team environment, and um, you, this is what a club like us should do.
Lastly, for me, uh, how much about this next three-game stretch? You got three on the road. How much of it is about kind of weathering the storm because of the matches all being in succession, all of them being on the road, and you guys also having to deal with, uh, like we said, the injuries over the course of the last couple of games? Yeah, is uh, but at the same time, Will, we want to – I understand the weather in the storm, but at the same time, we want to keep building our identity of play. So – we don't want to compromise the, the way we play. Today, we had the longest session video, obviously, to prepare the boys to what we believe we are going to find in LA. And uh, sometimes you have to train uh, in this way. We went to the pitch, but we can only do a limited amount of work, given the quick turnaround, and we can't really over-train the boys, uh, given that they have to play again and then to play again and traveling and then play again in Columbus and traveling and then play again, sorry, in Philadelphia and then Columbus. So, yeah, we need to maximize our resources. We have players and the opportunities will come. And what I say to the boys every day, you have to make, you have to be uh, ready for when the opportunity comes to take it. And uh, the best way to do that is to train well on a daily basis. There is no shortcuts. Always good to talk to you. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, Will. Thanks. Carol, you're up. Will is pretty comprehensive, so you're going to get off easy with me today, Christian. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering about um, Aj Ajiman. Am I saying that right? Um, you mentioned him. He looked like a nice, tall target in there and had some chances. What did you think of his debut? I think he had a positive debut. Unfortunately, it took ages for them to get on because, uh, I don't know, the ball went out twice, and I thought the fourth was taking too long time to, to make this substitution. Um, because uh, I think we lost about six minutes, which is kind of a record between the, the time that they want them to go in and then the time they actually went. He's a guy that I think Patrick, like Brandon, they are guys that they need to be uh, easy into the team because they come from different football. They are getting to grip with the intensity and the level by training with uh, with the first team on a daily basis. But then when you have to play expectations and uh, the games are different when you come from the bench or when you start. I thought Brandon earned the right to start in the last game because of his performances. Uh, but you can see that the difference even to play against the USL team that is uh, a strong players and organized, you know, it's not easy to, to repeat, uh, you know, the exploit that he had against Chicago when you come onto the game. He showed resilience and he also should have scored a goal. He had the one that's allowed for offside. He hit the post, so he could always dang he was dangerous, but at the same time, he didn't have the same impact that uh, when you start and when you come on. And the reason is that expectations are different. Uh, the moment of the game is different. And uh, for Patrick, it's the same. You know, I think that he does uh, a good job for us. He gives us a different different option in terms of physicality, in terms of technical abilities in playing as a number nine. He will get his chance, but it's also important that we um, ease him into the, into the team to give him the maximum of uh, uh, the possibilities to, to show his talent. Um, and also you mentioned Carujo being kind of similar with Kalina. I know with the goalkeeper, you have to pretty much just start him. But Carujo, you have a little bit more flexibility, right, where you yeah. could get him some minutes. Is that kind of what you're looking at, maybe some minutes here and there? Yeah, yeah. we want to build him to what he was, and the best way to do that is to, to give him the opportunity to play some minutes at the level where where uh, he's going to perform. You know, he's in, he can play another 90 minutes for Crown Legacy, but then you still are not sure how that is going to, what happens in MLS. It was important to give him at least an hour with Crown Legacy to see how he responded physically, not just on the day of the game, but also the day after. We had a long conversation yesterday with Guzman in the afternoon. He felt, after he had his rest, he felt really good. Uh, you know, after you are many months away from the action, it's not the same, and this is not at the same level that he was when he was playing week in, week out. So my idea is to build him and to give him opportunities to to build back his uh, his form and confidence uh, as whenever whenever possible, knowing that the team has to come before everybody and uh, 
you know, so we have to help him at the same time, but uh, in order for him to help the team, not to, the team has to be the, the most important thing for all of us. And lastly, you, you you seemed a little down the other night, maybe more than normal, and then you come in today with a little bit of that lingering. What was it about that game Wednesday that had you feeling that way? No, I, I felt really bad about the game because uh, for a number of things, we I was uh, I wanted us to do well in the cup. I think we could have had a, a very good run. I was upset for a number of things, the result because I think. We had enough chances in the first half to go in front. Uh, then we got this quick uh, red card, and even with ten men, I think we should be able to, you know, to to compete uh, not just uh, in the cup but also in MLS to win games. So at least not to concede. And I, I thought that we were a little bit, uh, uh, you know, as a team, we need to be a little bit more resilient. And this is what I'm asking our boys to to work in this direction, to be resilient. And uh, sometimes you can have things going against you. You can have a referee, you can have the weather, you can have, you know, one man down. But that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you don't have still. It means only the things can be maybe more difficult, different. But uh, we need to build this resilience in the club. And uh, when I don't see that, uh, I... Um, you know, that's something that I don't like. I am more a bit, obviously, today because, as I said, uh, always after a bad result, we need to move on and we need to keep fighting and focusing on the next uh, on the next challenge. And, uh, and I see also the boys that they were ready, but I want this resilience to be there and then, not to wait a day, you know, especially when the, the game doesn't go the way we want to be, but uh, the game is on and we need to fight with the same spirit that we have when we are on top. This, for me, is the most important aspect to work before even the, the tactical element. Thanks, Christian. Have a safe trip to Cali. Thank you, Carol. Okay, let's go to Kenneth. Hey, Christian. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kenneth. Hi. Um, so far this month, you've got scored eight eight goals. Um, you know, what's your attacking effort going into this three game road trip and how is the team's morale in terms of attacking? Sorry, said again, Kent. Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear very well what you were saying. Sorry about that. Um I was asking you guys have scored eight goals this month so far and heading into this road trip. Obviously you guys have been only uptick. You know, how is the morale and are there any changes you want to make to attacking and how do you want to go forward for the rest of uh the road trip going up? No, it's a good question, Kenneth. For me, the way we attack is very important. The way we take chances is uh, very, very important. Um, one of the upsetting things is that even if we are 10 men, I think we should have scored goals in in Birmingham. Uh, we had enough chances for sure to do that. And uh, when I don't see that, uh, you know, and I think it's true that... Uh, I gave chances to some of the younger players because I saw them in training and I can see that they have what it takes to, at least for the first hour, to be on top. And they were on top against Birmingham. But um, we have a structure there offensively that uh, is able to create, uh, to create danger to the opposition and we need to maximize that. Uh, and we work on that on a daily basis, I can assure you that, because for me, it's important to have a team that knows how to score in every game. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. All right, let's wrap it up with Mike Salarte. Good afternoon, Christian. Good to see you again, sir. Good to see you as well, Mike. After the uh, after the loss to Birmingham and some of your, your post-match comments, uh, you said you were tired of your team feeling sorry for themselves. Uh, how as a coach do you, I guess, and I mean, how do you try to change that mentality? I mean, is there something that you can do uh, in talking to the players to, you know, to, it sounds like you want them to be mentally tougher. And I know you kind of addressed it with Carol, but I mean, how do you approach that and get that mindset going throughout the, throughout the entire unit? 
Well, in a different ways. Um, obviously, we need uh, to have constant dialogue with the players and to create uh, exercise that put them under difficult situations. In the last stretch, we didn't have uh, many chances of doing that because we can't really train the, the, the full team as we want. Uh, we can train only half of the squad, the one that didn't play. And then uh, in this case, we had to do only one little light session today. So we have to, to address those issues on the video and uh, talking to the boys. But it's important that they understand if there is one lesson that to learn in life is to, to have grit and to be resilient is the most important quality, I think. And I, I said this to the boys today. If they only remember one thing is that of the many that I tell them, this is the most important one for me. Because uh, to be able to respond to adversity is in life and uh, everybody faces those at some point. It's not what happens to us, it's how we respond to what happens to us that makes the difference. And I want our team to really understand that. And when you feel sorry for yourself, there is always uh, an alibi or an, an excuse that you can use to you know, to get out of a tough situation. Instead, for me, there is no alibi, no excuses. It's uh, to find the solutions. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time because it's human nature to try to stay in our comfort zone. But we need to push ourselves out of that. And uh, for everybody, for DPs, for young players, everybody needs to to chip on this one. And uh, if we want to achieve something this season, if we want to achieve something in life, we need to have this very clear and we need to be a lot more resilient. Looking ahead to LA, uh, I know it's the long trip and, and everything, you know, the travel aside, how are you? I know you're obviously going through the with the staff to figure out your starting 11 but what do you what do you see in LA and and what do you see that they, that they do well and that you can try to counter uh, counter and, and have some success yeah a, this is a team that is full of talent uh, make no mistake Mike is uh, if uh, he has been underachieving but uh, the talent is there we played against them in preseason we know what they are capable of they have a world-class player and a uh, bunch of talent, uh, talented players in different positions and experienced one as well. It's going to be obviously tough because of the travel, because of everything. But as I said before, uh, we need to apply that. No excuses, no alibi. We go, we prepare with the with the strong uh, 11 and we want to go there to try to get a result for Charlotte FC. And uh, this is our aim by playing our football and to be true to ourselves, to our identity, starting with a strong mentality and then to play our football like we have done in Orlando, like we have done in Atlanta and uh, like we want to do wherever we go. I think at times we play really well in DC. Unfortunately, the result was determined by a couple of moments. But uh, also in DC, I think in the first half, we were playing in uh, DC half. And you can say, you can look at how DC is doing, that he was a team that was in a good form. Uh, wherever we went, I think we we did our bit, we played our part. And uh, Barry, maybe the second half in Salt Lake, that was difficult in many different ways. But other than that, uh, we need to go wherever without uh, looking at uh, the glass half empty. We need to look at the glass half full and what we have and how we are going to be uh, difficult for for Galaxy. Last one to try to pick your mood up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for this moment, you know, Mike. I, I know you are. That's why I save it for last. To, to, get, to send you off to Los Angeles with, with a smile on your face. Uh, a vast category, a vast uh, catalog of Robert De Niro films. Which one is your favorite? <laughs> Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> this is one that I particularly like, uh, the taxi driver, but there are many, you know, I love this interpretation of the Godfather. And, uh, you know, even, the, you know, Once Upon a Time in America is one of my favorite ones. I must admit. Maybe because the 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 director is from Rome, like me, Sergio Leone. But uh, 
you know, obviously I, I need to try to bring Rome somewhere in the movie. I've done it with Gladiator. I have to do it with uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Following up on that, he's coming out with a new movie with Sebastian Maniscalco. He's done more comedies in the last, I don't know, 20 years. You find sure. him as a, as a good comedic actor as well? I mean, showing his range? De Niro can do anything. He's like Bernardo Silva. <laughs> he can play left uh, back, right wing, and number 10, uh, number 8. So whatever they do, they do it well. So De Niro, do you think I can say anything, a bad word about De Niro? I can't. Thank you, Chris. Have, have a safe, have a safe trip, you. my friend. Bravo, <laughs> Mike. Bravo. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. We're going to wrap it up there. Uh, Mark, if you just want to stay on after, um, and we'll go with that one. Thank you, guys.